Hey there stampers, this is Sherry Roth with StampTreasures.com and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Shore Park, Alberta, Canada and I'm excited to be here to share with you a little peek at some new paper and how to create a pinwheel um, with patterned paper and um, we're going to make a couple cards with pinwheels on them. So I'm just going to update my screen here so that I can see your comments. Good morning Mary Liz. How are you today? Let's see here. Just updating my screen so that I can see your comments when I flip the camera around. Last day of work before two weeks off. Yes, that's awesome, isn't it? I'm just gonna swipe my, get rid of the comments on here. Okay, all right, so we're gonna jump in and get started because I know everybody is crazy busy getting last minute things ready for Christmas. I've got a ton of things on my to-do list and an appointment this afternoon. Good morning, Shara. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. First of all, like always, we've got the draw for last week's projects. So last week we created a couple masculine projects using a new suite from the um, upcoming occasions catalog. So we created this little squash card and a little box to go in it. So I'm gonna draw for that. For those of you who are new, happy Friday to you too, Shirley. Um, the way that you can get your name entered in to the projects, to win the projects that we create today is by commenting on the live Facebook post. Um, or commenting on the replay um, or commenting when I uh, upload the video to YouTube so depending on how you watch it and you have from the day it goes live until the following Thursday um, then I draw a winner on the at the following Facebook live okay so I've got everybody's name in here who commented or shared the video and the lucky winner is Beth so I will pop that in the mail for Beth I'm hoping that it will make it there okay. I think, if I remember correctly, she's in the States. So hopefully that box will survive the mail. Let's move that out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna go ahead and get started with our crafting for today. So just bear with me for just a moment. how that's lined up good morning Barb oh Barb I tried those olives that you gave me oh my goodness they're good okay so we will just I think that should be okay okay so these are the two cards that we're going to make today so both feature some little pinwheels. Pinwheels are so fun to make and it, it's been a while since I've made them. So we, I'm gonna show you how and um, we're gonna create these couple little cards. And this one is like a pocket card. So this just slides out. And this one, it's called a gatefold card. So a little bit of a fun folds. They're simple fun folds. Um, but what I like is the cute little pinwheels on them and the new DSP that we're using. So this DSP is in the occasions catalog. I'll share it with you in just a second. Um, so I needed some more juvenile kind of cards and oh, Shara says Landra loves these cards. And yes, I would imagine pink and purple are probably her favorite colors, hey? Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get started on these. Let me share the DSP first. Okay, all right, so this DSP is patterned paper that is going to be in the Occasions catalog, which starts January 3rd. Um, it's called How Sweet It Is, and there's a whole suite that goes along with it. I'm not gonna share the rest of the products in the suite just yet, um, but we've got some 
cupcakes and lollipops and candy and jelly beans, gummy bears. Isn't this one cute? And then some little confetti or polka dots. And then some candy jars and cupcakes. Some gumball machines. And then some more candy jars with candy in it. There is a stamp set and a framelit set that coordinates with it. Um, and the framelits cut out the candy jars. They may also cut out the cupcakes as well. I'm not 100% sure on that. And then we flip it over and these are my favorite sides. Um, so we've got some candies here, some pink stripes. Can't go wrong with stripes. Love this one, love, love, love it. And this one as well. So nice diagonal stripes. And then this one, I love the colors in this one. And then you can't go wrong with polka dots either. So, uh, oh, Mary Liz says that Andrew could use the gummy bear paper on his, her birthday card. So this is some super fun paper. And like I said, there's other great things that come in this suite as well. So you can watch for more on that definitely later on. Now, for those of you who really know me, you probably think this is not Sherry's kind of paper at all. And you know what? To be honest, this side, um, well, some of the patterns I would probably use. These I would cut out and maybe use on them, but the patterns and the colors are very different from my usual style. But I love to challenge myself, and I've been having fun with this paper. So let's set this, let's throw it on the floor for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we are going to start with this little pocket card here first okay <clears throat> excuse me all right so I have a piece of four and a quarter by 11 inch whisper white card top and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to score that so I'm gonna bring in my paper cutter I'm gonna move my scoring blade out of the way and I am going to score it at two and three quarters of an inch And then I'm gonna rotate it around and do two and three quarters of an inch from the other end. So this card will still end up being a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. I'm just scoring it instead of down the middle, I'm scoring it in um, a couple different places. So then I'm gonna fold, use my bone folder to make it nice and crisp. And then fold this one down. Okay, so then they meet up in the middle. All right, and then I've got my piece of patterned paper. This is cut, so this is this pattern. I could use that side up or I can use this side. I'm gonna use the diagonal stripes. So this piece is cut two and five eighths by four and an eighth so that I have just like a sixteenth of an inch of the white showing around the edges. And I'm going to stick that on the bottom here. Is Andrew feeling better, Mary Liz? I know last week he was homesick. Okay, so we've got our border there. And then I'm gonna create my pocket. So what I'm gonna do, if I use my roll-on adhesive, it narrows the, the size of pocket that you have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a little thin strip of Tombow adhesive. And I'm not putting it too close to the edge. Can you guys, I don't know if you can see that. So I don't want it to seep out the edges when I close the pocket. So I'm leaving a little bit of a gap there. Okay, so then I'll close that up, apply a little bit of pressure. And then I'll let that sit while we move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. Um, what I'm gonna do is I have another piece of, this one is gorgeous grape cardstock. Again, it measures two and five eighths by four and an eighth. And I'm gonna bring in my big shot and we're gonna use the confetti embossing folder to, um, to add some texture to that. Okay, so I've got the, conf I think this is confetti. Um, it's got, it looks like it's got confetti on there or sequins on it. It might be called the sequence embossing folder. Actually, I should have double checked that. But I'm gonna stick this on. This is a dynamic 
textured impressions folder, which means it's one of those thicker ones that really adds lots of dimension. So I've got my Big Shot platform, not my magnetic platform, just the regular platform. It is a six inch folder, so I'm gonna make sure it's lined up nicely. And then I'm gonna put one platform on top, or one mat on top, sorry, and then feed that through. out of the way and then I'll show you what we end up with. Okay, so now we've got a piece of textured gorgeous grape cardstock and it's got like little sequins on here. All right, so that is gonna go on the top of this right here. So you'll see that I'm switching it up a little bit. So the sample actually used Melon Mambo. I'm gonna try it with the gorgeous grape and see what it looks like. Uh, is that in the annual catalog? I don't remember seeing it. Yes, I, <laughs> um, now you're making me question myself, Barb. Uh, yes, I believe it is in the annual catalog. I think it came out in last year's occasions catalog and I'm pretty sure it carried over. Um, usually I pull out all of my retired stuff um, and that was left in the bin. So I'm assuming it's still available. Okay, so now we've got our card base done. This little insert measures um, two and five eighths by, f uh, no, that's not right, three and a half by five inches. And that is just gonna get tucked in here. You could stamp a greeting on there if you wanted and tuck it in there, but that's primarily meant for your message. You could actually decorate this too. You could put a strip of DSP across the top. You could stamp some images on there, but I'm just gonna leave it plain, okay? So this is our card base, that's all done. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on our pinwheel. So what you'll need is, I found our stamp and pierce mat really helpful, a take your pick tool or a paper piercer. Um, and then you'll need, need a piece of double-sided patterned paper. Okay, so I'm using that same paper that I showed you at the beginning of the video. This piece measures three inches by three inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it diagonally, line up these corners, and then I'm just gonna give it a pinch right here, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same this way and give it a pinch in the center. And that will tell me where the center is. So you can use a ruler and a pencil and mark measure and mark the center if you want, but you know what? Um, things are busy with Christmas right around the corner. <laughs> This is the easiest and quickest way to do it. Um, so yeah, instead of using a ruler and a pencil, I just, like I said, lined up those corners, gave it a little pinch, and that tells me where they meet up, tells me where the center is. Now I'm gonna take my scissors, and I'm gonna cut towards that center line, or that center mark, leaving about an eighth of an inch. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about your, cut lines being perfectly straight. That doesn't matter. And don't worry about leaving an even space, just as long as you have a gap. You don't wanna cut it all the way there because you don't want to cut that triangle off. Um, oh, Mary Liz says, yes, annual catalog scattered sequence is what that embossing folder is. Thank you, Mary Liz. I should really check those things before I, um, before I go live on a video. Okay, so now I've got the base of my pinwheel and I still need my paper piercer um, and the mat. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke a hole. Let's see, if I lift this up, you guys can kind of see where I'm poking. So I'm gonna poke a hole kind of in this corner, not too close to the edge. I'm gonna skip this one and I'm gonna poke this one. I'm gonna skip this one, I'm gonna poke this one. I'm gonna skip this one and poke this one. So you're doing every other corner. So you're only poking one hole on each one of these triangular pieces and it's always in the same position. So if you would have done it here, that's fine. You could do it here, 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 and here. It's just always in the same position all the way around your little triangle. And then you're gonna need a brad. So, and it doesn't matter where you start, just pick one to start with. You're gonna feed it through and this is the trickiest part of the whole thing. 
Okay, so I'm gonna feed it through that hole and then kind of fold it in. And then I'm gonna bring the next one. So I'm working counterclockwise. Uh, no, I'm going clockwise. This is clockwise. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring in the next one and I'm just feeding it onto that brad. And then the last one, this is the hardest one to do. So you're gonna feed it in here, feed it through the hole. Okay, so now I've got all four of those on there. Now this hole that I punched in here, you're gonna feed the brad through that. And surprisingly, that is actually easier than doing um, each one of those little nubby things. So then you've got the brad through the back and you're just gonna separate it. And there's your pinwheel, it's done. So it's as simple as that. All right, so now I'm going to bring back my card base and actually let's do some stamping. I forgot that I had to do some stamping. I've got a base for my pinwheel as well, which I cut just whisper white cardstock. It's about an eighth of an inch and then however long you need it. You can also use like pop those popsicle sticks that you can buy. You can use skewers, wooden skewers. Um, depending on the size of the pinwheel, you could probably use a toothpick. So there's lots of th different things that you can use. I chose to do patterned paper for this, or sorry, um, cardstock for this, because if I'm gonna mail it, I want it to be able to fold flat. And these are okay to push flat as well. They look just as good flat as they do with the dimension, okay? So I'm gonna do a stamp my greeting. So I've got the stamp set that I'm using. It's one of my favorite birthday sets. I absolutely love this birthday set. Picture perfect birthday. There's so many great greetings in here, but I'm using this happiest of birthdays to you. And I'm using my memento black. Lots of shadow today, hey? Okay. So ink that up nicely. And then I'm gonna stamp it in the corner. Let's take this out so that we don't have a ridge. Line this up here. And just make sure I apply pressure because I'm stamping right on and it's already stuck down. Normally I don't stick anything down until I, uh, I stamp it. Make sure we get a nice good impression. All right, that's good. Okay, so now I can slide this back in the pocket. And then we're going to adhere our pinwheel. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it. First of all, I want to make sure that my card is still gonna fit into a standard size envelope. So I wanna make sure that I put it in a position where it will fit on here nicely. So I don't wanna do it like this because then it won't fit in the envelope. So I'm gonna do it like this. So my stick needs to go this way. Let's use a couple dimensional, or mini glue dots, sorry. I'm just gonna add a couple mini glue dots here. And then we want our stick. About like that. Let's just make sure we get this in the right position. Okay. That looks good. Okay, so I've stuck my stick on. Now at this point, you can use dimensionals, you can use mini glue dots. I am actually just gonna go in with my fast fuse. You do wanna use a sturdier adhesive. And I'm only applying adhesive on the back of the pinwheel. I don't wanna apply any adhesive on here because then, then I'll seal my card closed. push down in that center, and there we go. We've got our card done. So which guy, which one do you prefer? Do you guys prefer the pink or the purple? I think they both look good. Oh, I guess I need to trim the, let's trim this. All right, so pink or purple, which one do you guys like? Okay, so next up, we are going to, Barb says purple. Yeah, I think I like the purple too. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make this gatefold card now. So this one has two pinwheels on it, and if you look, they're actually a little bit smaller. So you can make pinwheels 
any size. Oh, Shara and Landra vote for pink. Um, you can use pinwheels any size. You just start with whatever size square you want. Um, the smaller they are, the finickier they are. So for this next project, I've actually gone ahead, I've made them. These ones started with a two and a half inch square piece of DSP. So I've gone ahead and made those exactly the same as the big ones. Let me show you some other, the bigger ones, some other ones that I created here. I'm working on this for a display for my upcoming occasions catalog launch party. So this one is done with a six by six. This one is done, look at those gummy bears. This one is done with a five by five. And this one is done with a four by four. So, and then we've got the three by three and then the two and a half by two and a half. So you can see, you can, you could even make it out of a 12 by 12, which I want to try because I think that would be really cool. Just this massive pinwheel made out of a 12 by 12 piece of, of pattern paper. The other thing that you can do is you can decorate the centers if you want as well. So these ones, you can see that I've just attached them to a wooden skewer and I just used a few little mini glue dots to stick them on. So these are gonna go into a little um, galvanized tin that I have um, and then they'll be on display. All right, so back to the card. Okay, so we've got our pieces here. I'm gonna bring in my paper cutter again. This time I've got a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm gonna bring in my paper cutter so I can do some score lines. And I'm going to score it at two and one eighth inches from one of the short sides. And then I'm gonna rotate it around and do two and one eighth of an inch from the opposite side. Okay, now I get this question a lot. When I score, you can see, well, I don't know how well you can see, but it's got grooved lines there. So it's got little grooves in it. I always fold with the groove up, I fold down. So what you do when you score is you break or bend those fibers that are in the cardstock so that it makes them a little bit more pliable. So then you fold, they allow, they allow them to stretch or if they're broken, they're already broken, so then it folds nicely. So if you fold that way, then you don't get those, um, you don't get those ugly little crease marks um, by breaking those fibers and allowing them to stretch like that. So you get a nice clean fold. I often get that question. Okay, so that this is called a gate fold. You can do lots of things. I've done belly bands around these to hold them closed. Um, today we're just we're doing something else. We're just adding the pinwheels, so that doesn't really hold it closed, but that's fine. It still looks really good. All right, so now I've got two pieces of gorgeous grape cardstock that I've already run through using the scattered sequence embossing folder, um, and these measure two inches by five and three eighths. Okay, and I'll add adhesive to the back. Let's make sure we've got them. Yep adhesive to the back and then we'll add those to the panel these pinwheels would make great birthday decor um, you could even do them for Christmas um, with some Christmas paper and add them as a centerpiece on a table with some pretty Christmas paper, that'd be really nice. Okay, so now I've got the front of my card done. Um, let's actually do the inside before we go on. Okay, so I'm gonna use black ink. I'm gonna use the little happy birthday that is in this set. I'll grab a Just gonna stamp that in black right in the center. And then I'm gonna pull in some gorgeous grape and some, some gorgeous grape and some melon mambo ink. Gorgeous grape, melon mambo. Melon mambo. And I'm going to use 
this little image here. Actually, no, let's, let's do the sprinkles this time. We're gonna use the sprinkles. And let's do pink first. So how's everybody feeling about Christmas? Are you guys all ready? My presents aren't wrapped. I think most of my shopping is done. I have, I still have to get something else for Ethan. And he's hard to buy for. Okay, so just to add a few little sprinkles on there. And set that aside. Okay, now the other thing that I wanna do before I add my pinwheels is you'll notice that I have a greeting stamped at the bottom and I did not stamp it before I ran it through the embossing folder. Uh, Mary, uh, Barb is going to Jasper today and skiing tomorrow. Oh, that's so nice. Um, well, you have fun, enjoy that. Mary Liz says uh, she's got some food stuff and flowers tomorrow and then plan for PJs and movies. That sounds like a good plan. How's your mom doing Mary Liz? Um, oh, you haven't gone to see her yet, have you? That's tonight that you're going to see her. I hope she's doing well. Okay, um, so you'll notice that I have a, a greeting stamped here, but I didn't stamp it before I embossed. So that's not a problem. I'm gonna show you a solution that you can do with that. And we are going to pull in the Stamparatus. So this is our new Stamparatus bag that is available. If you've got a Stamparatus bag, you need one of these. Um, it's great for holding everything in its place. So I use this little Velcro pocket to hold, well right now it only has my instructions in it, but I hold my extra plates um, and then my extra mats and everything because I've got two Stamparatus, Stamparatuses. Um, and then this one holds my grid paper, the outside pocket, it's a magnet closure. I've got my templates and a few little samples in there. And then this pocket holds my Stamparatus. So I'm gonna pull this out. And I think one of my magnets, it's stuck to the back of this. So I'm gonna add that to the back of here. Okay, so now, for those of you who may not have seen a Stamparatus before, this is a stamp positioning tool. Um, so it comes like this, it's got two very strong magnets. I usually actually don't use both magnets. I think there's only been one occasion where I felt that I needed both magnets. I try to keep, oh, Shara says finishing wrapping today. Yes, I still need to do that too. I'm hoping to get to that tonight. Um, both kids are working tonight, so they'll be out of the house. Um, so they are very strong magnets. So you want to try to keep them away from each other uh, because if they snap together, they will shatter uh, and you don't want that to happen. It also comes, so it's got this grid on here. It comes with two of these plates, which you can rotate and you can actually hinge as well. I've done several videos um, with different things that you can do with the Stamparatus. Um, so if you're interested in those, just check my YouTube channel. It also comes with this foam mat. This foam mat, what you want to use this when, you want to use this when you're using photopolymer stamps because photopolymer stamps are just the rubber so just like this, they don't have that extra foam that red rubber has. So when you're using red rubber, you don't use this mat. When you're using photopolymer, you use this mat. Then an optional item that you can purchase is grid paper, um, which is really nice. It's sized to fit perfectly. Um, and then one thing that I found works, it helps work even better is I have a silicone mat for each of my, um, Stamparatuses as well because I find just that extra little height especially around the hinged areas It just helps lift that and you get a nice good impression. So I'm going to put this down and then put my grid paper down and Oh, I've got some ink on here Oh, what's going on? I've got ink on my fingers now. I've got it on my projects Okay, well that one we'll make sure we cover over that one and we'll stamp around this one so we don't see it Okay, so we want to stamp in this corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the card and flip it up, line it right in the corner here. And then I'm gonna put my magnet up here so it's out of the way because I'm going to be stamping down here. 
going to pick my greeting, which is my all-time favorite greeting out of everything that every stamp set that we carry. And it says, today we celebrate wonderful, brilliant, fabulous you. I just love it. Okay, so I'm going to position this on here. Trying to make sure it's straight. Okay, and then I'm going to close this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black ink and I'm going to ink this up. And then I will close it down and apply some pressure. So remember this is embossed, so it may not, so you can see here, so it didn't come up with the entire greeting. So that's why I did it on the Stamparatus, is so that it's lined up perfectly. I don't have to worry. I can go right back in and it will line, it will stamp in exactly the same position. I'll just apply a little bit more pressure in those areas. So if you had done that just with a clear block, even though it's photopolymer and you can see through, you likely would not get it lined up in exactly the same position. See, look at that, and now it's perfect. I think we might have to add a little sequence or something on there. All right, so that's why I did that on the Stamparatus. My little saving grace. Okay, so now we're ready to add our little sequence, or not sequence, um, pinwheels. So let's figure out where we're going to put these. So I think I might do the pink one down here. Okay. Okay. So remember we want to make sure it doesn't stick off of the card so that we can still fit it in the envelope. That. and then we'll add some adhesive to this guy oh did I leave enough room to that should work oh that didn't add very much adhesive let's use mini glue dots for this guy See, by overlapping it like that, we've got almost like a little notch. Oh, I'm gonna have to take my little adhesive eraser and get rid of that adhesive so it sticks nicely. So then you can just tuck that underneath there and that will hold it closed. Or you can leave it on top if you want. There we go. So we've got that one and we've got this one. Which one do you guys like? The lighter purple or the darker purple? I think they both look good. I'm not sure which one I like. All right, so I hope I've inspired you guys to go and try to make an adhesive eraser, Marie Liz, yet. Yes, they do make something called an adhesive eraser. This is what it looks like. Um, we used to carry them. We don't anymore, um, but at, you'd probably be able to get it at an art store or maybe in the art section at the local craft store. You might be able to find them there. Um, so it takes off the adhesive really nicely let's see sometimes you have to pick off this little gummy area where you do want to be careful when you do it because you don't especially on patterned paper because you don't want it to rip there we go it's gone no sticky stuff it's as simple as that i don't know who came up with that idea but it's genius every crafter should have one of those every paper crafter anyways all right um so yeah, I hope I inspired you to go and try to make a couple pinwheels. Like I said, they're so simple. And um, yes, it would make a good stocking stuffer, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully over the holiday season, sorry, I'm reading your comments and getting distracted here. Hopefully over the holiday season, you guys have a little bit of time to craft. 
I will be back live next Friday with a another Facebook live. I'm not I have no idea what I'm gonna do. It might be a last minute thing like this morning was. I knew I was gonna go live, but I had no idea what I was gonna do until this morning. Um, so that's how quick and easy these things can be. So, all right. So hopefully you have a bit of time to get some crafting. Remember to comment, to share this post, and you'll have the opportunity to have these cards mailed to you. And I hope you all have a fabulous Christmas. And I will chat with you next week. All right. Merry Christmas.